Welcome to the Ballroom, a very special conference room in the Peace Palace. This room was especially designed for the paintings here. These paintings are made by the Dutch famous artist Ferdinand Boel. paintings existed long before the Peace Palace was built. The Carnegie Foundation, the manager of the Peace Palace, obtained the paintings before the building process had started. The whole room was specifically designed to accommodate these paintings in the style of the 17th century. The Peace Palace is the worldwide symbol of peace through law. The idea is that war is prevented because parties in the conflict choose for a peaceful settlement in the courtroom instead of on the battlefield, with the loss of human life. The Peace Palace houses the Permanent Court of Arbitration, the United Nations International Court of Justice and the Hague Academy of International Law. The palace could be built thanks to a huge donation of Andrew Carnegie and gifts such as artworks from various countries. Carnegie Foundation is the owner and manager of the Peace Palace. It facilitates and serves the courts and the academy and supports them with the library of the Peace Palace. Margriet van Eikema Hommes is senior researcher at the Dutch Cultural Heritage Agency and has supervised several extensive research projects on Dutch painting ensembles, including those of Ferdinand Bol and La Resse. Margriet, could you tell us more about these paintings, their history and their background, uh, to start with the Ferdinand Bol paintings? Well, one is first struck by the enormous size of these paintings, four meters high and paintings of such a huge size were quite un unusual in the Dutch 17th century. But from the second half of the century, such wall-filling canvases, they were called uh, painted wall hangings, became increasingly popular. One can find them in palaces or administrative buildings such as town halls, but also for domestic residences of the well-to-do bourgeoisie. Paul's paintings are an example of this. They were ordered in the early 1660s by a wealthy widow, Jacoba Lampsens, who lived with her three teenage sons in the Dutch city of Utrecht. And the canvases were meant for her reception room in her monumental kennel house at the Nieuwe Gracht. Paintings show biblical scenes and one mythological narrative. In this painting you can see the pharaoh's daughter finding Moses in his reed basket. This painting shows the Babylonian king Cyrus handing over to the people of Israel the treasure that had been looted from their temple of Jerusalem. And this painting shows the mythological narrative. We see Aeneas receiving a new set of armor from his mother, the goddess Venus. The fourth painting is located in a room on the ground floor of the Peace Palace. It shows again a biblical story, the captain of God's army appearing to Joshua. The fifth painting, Abraham receiving the three angels, is in the collection of the Dutch Cultural Heritage Agency. The five stories all fit in within the family history of Jacoba Lampsens and her social ambitions. She descended from an influential Protestant family from the southern Netherlands and her ancestors had fled to the Dutch Republic because of acts of war during the 18th years war. So she actually descended from refugees. Jacoba Lampsens and her late husband were newcomers in Utrecht and therefore they did not belong to the ruling class there. But given her background, she aspired that her sons 
would also become members of the ruling elite. And the five paintings express her ambitions. The story of Aeneas is about a prince who had fled his hometown Troy by acts of war. He lands in Italy where he is predestined to rule. His mother Venus presents him with armor that will make him invincible, so that he can marry a royal princess. And this allows him to become ancestor of a famous house of rulers. So this is a very appropriate theme for Jacobe Lampsens, because in her view, also her sons descended from an eminent ruling family, a family that had fled their homeland because of the acts of war and had to settle abroad. A similar analogy can be found in the story of Moses. Also his ancestors had to leave their homeland and his salvation by the daughter of the Pharaoh was also seen as an example of divine providence. Therefore in the 17th century refugees from the southern Netherlands often identified themselves with Moses. Well over 200 years later, the five paintings were removed from the house in Utrecht and transferred to the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. And at the beginning of the 20th century, four paintings were given in permanent loan to the Peace Palace. The interior of the ballroom was decorated to match the 17th century paintings. Beautifully carved wainscoting, stained glass windows and matching brass chandeliers. The portraits of the 17th and 18th century forefathers of international law, Hugo Grotius and Cornelis van Binkershoek, are displayed above the doors. These wooden details are all made of lime wood from the trees that grew on the grounds of the Peace Palace. The Dutch firm Kinheim designed and hand knotted this large custom made carpet based on pomegranate motifs from Turkestan. All the elements in the room are designed to match the paintings that were already painted ages ago. Margeet, as you look up, you can see this triptych, these spectacular paintings. Can you tell me more about the meaning and history of these works of art? In 1903, the Carnegie Foundation purchased for the Peace Palace this monumental set of three ceiling paintings by Gerard de la Resse, one of the most important Dutch painters of the late 17th century. We see a cloud-filled sky with mythological and allegorical figures. The central figure is Freedom, with her scepter and freedom hat. Because Mercury is present, she refers to free trade. She is being crowned with the crown of ships. The lion, symbol of the Dutch Republic, defends her with his sword and shield, bearing the Amsterdam coat of arms. To the left we see Concord with her attributes, a horn of plenty and a bundle of arrows. She is trampling two enemies underfoot. The fighting woman on the right canvas is the personification of security. She's chasing away envy with snake hair and some harpies. Mythical greedy monsters, half bird, half woman. Water gods enclose the outer paintings. To the left the Amsterdam Bay A and to the right the Amsterdam River Amstel. The reason for the purchase was the title of the series in the sale catalogue. The Triomphe de la Paix, Triumph of Peace. And that was found well suited for a building for peace. Here are also the oldest pictures of the series. The ceiling paintings came from an Amsterdam kennel house at Heerengracht. And they had been originally commissioned by Burgomaster Andries de Graaf for his reception room. Below on the rock you can see La Resse's signature. The paintings are dated 1672. Can you tell me more about this year? Yeah, the year 1672 is a very important year for Dutch history. 
It has actually been etched in the annals of Dutch history as the disaster year. The Republic was attacked from four sides, which almost brought it to its knees. Against this turbulent background, the creation of Larese's ceiling series takes place. And the genesis appears to be highly unusual. Technical analysis of the canvases, using amongst others X-rays and infrared light, has shown that Larese significantly altered his ceiling compositions. For example, Concord now holds four arrows, but originally there were seven. Seven arrows were the symbol for the Republic's seven united provinces. But after three provinces were lost to enemy forces, Larese reduced the bundle to only four arrows. And note that under Concord's hand there are still seven shafts. Margriet, why are these paintings so unique? Well, Bol's paintings are unique because this is the earliest series of painted wall hangings from a civilian residence. And the paintings also show how the commissioning patron used the paintings not just to decorate her home, but also to express her ambitions and ideas. And that is also true, of course, of the ceiling paintings by Gerard de la Resse. To preserve these magnificent works of art and present them to the public, the Carnegie Foundation needs support. There are many ways to support the Peace Palace, so please take a good look at the website and join the mission to promote world peace.